so it's the 14th of October. It's Monday, which means it's officially the first day of Spookathon. Ha 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 ha. And I feel so ill. I have come down with something. I don't know what. Everyone at work's got it, and I just feel so dead, which is very apt for the theme of this week, which is all things spooky. Yeah, so I've been looking forward to this readathon all month, and now I'm just really not in the mood to read because all I want to do is lay in bed and sleep. My head really hurts so I know it's going to be difficult to focus on anything like reading but we're going to power through. I've got my strepsils which are like sweets to me and I've got my paracetamol and loads of water and fruit juices and soups and hopefully I'll be okay. (laughs) So it's currently half eleven in the morning. I have slept in massively. Work was so shit yesterday. It was such a bad shift for so many different reasons and I ended up going home early because I was so stressed and I just slept so not off to a good start. I have started my spookathon. I started reading a few chapters of This Monstrous Thing by Mackenzie Lee this morning while I was awake when my boyfriend was getting ready for work. So I'm only about 18 pages in but I've read two chapters so we've made a start. That's the main thing. Um, I'm planning to start an audiobook today as well. I want to start listening to The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde and I know that that's something that I'm going to continue throughout the week when I have time, when I'm doing other things like going to the gym or walking or doing the house jobs, whatever. I have work tonight at five and I really wish I didn't so I am hoping that they send me home as soon as I get there because I know it's not going to be busy. Work this week's going to be a little bit crazy. I'm working six out of seven days because I'm picking up an extra shift Thursday night and I'm doing a 12 hour shift on Wednesday and so my reading time has been cut by a few more hours. I don't know how this week's gonna go in terms of reading. So tomorrow is my only day off and I'm gonna make the most of it. I'm not gonna do anything other than read. Anyway, I'm gonna go and have a bath and make myself look a little bit more presentable. I'm sorry about this appearance, but no effort has been made so far because I just can't be bothered. (laughs) Hopefully, after a little soak, I will feel a bit better. Yeah, very, very excited to get involved with this spook fun. I feel like I'm going to fail miserably, but that's part of the fun, right? <laughs> okay, so I've been reading for the last three hours straight, and I'm pretty much halfway through now. Very close to the halfway mark. I'm really enjoying it. I'm really liking the steampunk vibes in the story. The whole thing about mechanical men being made from clockwork parts is really intriguing to me. It's very unique and I'm loving the whole connection to Frankenstein as well. I haven't actually read Frankenstein. It's just one of those books that I've never picked up. But I'm familiar with the story just because it's so ingrained in our culture and Mary Shelley is a character in this story as well um, which I didn't think I would like that much but I actually rather do so I'm gonna have to stop reading now because I've got a few things that I have to do um, before work but very excited to carry on.
I was actually listening to this album while I was reading this monstrous thing and I feel like it's the perfect album actually to listen to when you're reading creepy stories it's just got this really weird sci-fi kind of alien vibe about it This song actually sounds like Phantom of the Opera, which I absolutely love. It's really hot in here and I can't tell if it's because I'm ill or if it's because I'm wearing this massive hoodie. I've got to head to work now. I am feeling a little bit better. I'm kind of dosed up on paracetamol and I've had loads of strepsils and soup just to get through the night basically um, but I'm really happy with my reading progress considering I wasn't really feeling like reading this morning. I've read about 75 pages or something as you saw earlier it's pretty much halfway through the book so I did better than I expected. I would have liked to have got more done but it, it's better than nothing and it is only day one of the spookathon so I'm not gonna put any pressure on myself I'm not gonna you know try and be too ambitious straight away I've got six more days so we'll see how it goes I'm gonna head to work now and hopefully it's not gonna be as bad a shift as yesterday and I'm hoping that I might just might get out of work early-ish so that I can get home and potentially finish this book tonight. I feel like I might get out early because last Monday I only did two and a half hours. It was really quiet. So fingers crossed that it's like that again. Yeah, I didn't get out of work early. It wasn't that quiet in the end. And we had a few walk-ins and someone booked a table for half nine. So <laughs> don't know if I'm going to get any reading done when I get home but we'll see. It's raining like crazy right now and I am so happy to be in my car and not out there. So I think I'm gonna have to up my reading game tomorrow if I wanna get this book finished and start another one. But like I said, still got six days, so don't put too much pressure on myself because I always do that. It's just a readathon. It's not that important, it'll be fine, but I need to get home because I'm hungry and I want to get in bed. <laughs> I'm running so late. <laughs> Good afternoon guys, it's Tuesday and I'm only just updating now because this morning has been yeah pretty non-existent i slept in again this morning which i'm so annoyed about i didn't wake up until half past 10. yeah i've not really read much so far i read one chapter of this monstrous thing this morning while i was in bed after i got up i filmed a video um that i'm hoping to post at the end of this week and I still have a few little bits to film for that but I didn't have time because I ended up running late for my appointment at the hairdressers. I'm gonna get my hair dyed, hopefully blonde, which is a very drastic change for me. Uh, while I was walking to the hairdressers I did start listening to the audiobook for The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I'm only halfway through chapter two and honestly I don't really feel much for it at the minute. The story's not really piquing my interest that much but I'm sticking with it just because 
Ben Barnes is narrating it and I love Ben Barnes. He's got such a gorgeous voice. I could listen to him read the phone book and I would be happy. So I'm sticking with it because of that. I did like the film when I saw it years and years ago and I just feel like it's a story that I would like but I don't know if I'm going to listen to any more of it today because I do want to finish this monstrous thing. So that's my plan for this afternoon. Anyway, um, so yeah, I'm going to make a cup of tea and I'm going to sit myself down and finish this monstrous thing, hopefully, before my boyfriend gets home from work at five. And hopefully then I can start on reading some... Ooh. I really need to stop biting my lip because that is not... <laughs> that's not a good look oh no um sorry guys i've lost my way so i'll just end it here yeah <laughs> i just finished my first book for spookathon yay so i have just finished reading this monstrous thing and i really enjoyed it it's a frankenstein retelling but it's set within the time period that Frankenstein was released. So the novel features in the story, Mary Shelley features in the story, which I thought was a really interesting concept. Mackenzie Lee has basically placed Mary Shelley in her narrative as the best friend of these two brothers, Alistair and Oliver, and she's used the story of Alistair really animating Oliver, bringing him back from the dead, using mechanical parts, you know, clockwork pieces, as the inspiration behind Frankenstein. And I thought that was really interesting. I love when authors do that and they play about with history, especially because Mary Shelley has always said, you know, that Frankenstein came to her in a dream. The idea for that story came to her in a dream. And so Mackenzie Lee's kind of played on that and has created her own Frankenstein story, which was really, really enjoyable. And I haven't actually read Frankenstein. And now that I've read this, I really do want to read it. And yeah, it was just so much fun. I love the whole steampunk vibes. You know, I love the whole um, narrative of the Shadow Boys and you know the work that they do is illegal and they're being hunted by the police and people that don't agree with what they're doing and you know I love the dynamics between Oliver and Alistair you know and how their relationship developed throughout the story and how it was very different before Oliver died and then how it has changed after he was brought back from the dead there's a lot of things that I want to talk about without spoiling it for you. So I'm just going to shut up now um, before I do that. But I'm going to give this book four stars. And I want to give it five stars. But I just feel that some things really niggled at me a little bit. And one of the things that niggled at me the most, and it's going to sound really petty, is just how the word bleeding was used all the time as a curse word and like every other page you know Alistair would say it oh it's not bleeding all right or I'm bleeding sick of this or bleeding hell or whatever and you know you could do it you could do a drinking game out of that you could take a shot every time he said that word and also as much as I loved the ending I just felt that it was over very quickly and there was just some things that I wanted to be elaborated on a little bit more there were a few things that were left unanswered for me but overall it was a really good book and both books that I have read by Mackenzie Lee this year have been great I've really enjoyed them I think she's a great writer she's really done her homework with you know the periods that she sets her stories in and the characters that she's writing about yeah so that's book one of Spookathon done and so far it's been a success you know I finished one book um so now I have to go and decide what book two 
is going to be and I'm hoping that I can read some of that tonight. So I'm going to go and decide which book that's going to be now and I'll update you all in a little bit. <laughs> Morning guys, um, it's Thursday and reading yesterday didn't happen. I worked for 12 hours and I am still very tired. It's 11 o'clock. I have just woken up about 15 minutes ago. Tuesday night I started The Whitby Witches by Robin Jarvis and I am 75 pages in to it. Um, so chapter 4 and don't really know how I feel about it. I don't hate it but I don't love it. Very detailed regarding the history of Whitby. You can tell the author has really done his homework. So I'm excited to see where it goes. Um, so that's my plan for today is to try and read as much of that as I can. I'm at work at half past six so I've got plenty of time to get this done. Hello guys, so I have been to the hairdressers and I had my skin test done so I have to wait 48 hours just to make sure that I'm not allergic to the hair dye but so far so good. So I've booked in my appointment for next Wednesday just to get some highlights in my hair and just you know do something with this because it really annoys me. And while I was out I decided to have a look around charity shops in my village and I treated myself to some bookish goodies. Just like show you them really quickly now um, but I'll probably do a proper book haul video for you guys soon because I have got a few books that I have already bought previously. These are what I bought and I bought all of these here for £3.50 so that's an absolute bargain. The Fear by C.L. Taylor. This is like some psychological thriller about a girl who runs away with her teacher and then a little bit later on in her life when she's an adult she discovers that he's involved with another teenager. Uh, I've never seen this book before but I just really like the cover. Then I got One Day in December by Josie Silver. This is a book that came out last year I think and it it's really popular actually. I know quite a few people that like it. Don't really read contemporary romance that much. Don't know if I'm going to like it that much. But I needed something for December that's going to be Christmassy and get me into the festive spirit. So this is the book for that. And I got Glass Sword by Victoria Aveyard, which is the sequel to Red Queen. And you guys know that I read Queen. And you guys know that I read <laughs> this is so hard to say. <laughs> you guys know that I read Red Queen. There we go. Back in August. Don't really love it, but I don't hate it. So I saw that this was on sale for 50p and I thought if I'm going to buy it and give it a go, at least if I don't like it, I've not spent that much money on it. So there's that as well. And then I bought Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn and also Dark Places by Gillian Flynn. Been wanting to read these two books for ages, but just never got around to buying them. Loved Gone Girl when I read it. Absolutely one of my favourite thrillers. So I'm very excited to delve into these two. I think this one's her debut novel and it got really, really good reviews. And I don't have a copy of Gone Girl anymore and I did see that it had it in the charity shop. I was like, I'm not going to buy it because I've already read it. But I'm kind of wishing that I had now because I love these covers. I think they're so cool. And the Gone Girl covers are sim very similar but orange and I thought they'd look really cool on my bookshelf but anyway. So yeah, I've done everything that I needed to do today. I've done all my house chores and I listened to the picture of Dorian Gray on Audible while I was doing those. I am about a third of the way through the audiobook now. I'm not 
sure. It's about half past two now and I've got exactly four hours before I need to work. So I'm going to sit down and read some more of the Whitby Witches. I, yeah, I'm, I'm on page 75, but um, I'm going to, I don't really like dog ear in my books, but my boyfriend's just printed me off a load of bookmarks for me. So if I'm reading multiple books all at the same time, I can bookmark them. So there we go. Okay, so let me just show you where I'm at in this book. I'm on page 167 and I can't read anymore today because my mind is just starting to wander now and I have to go to work very soon. But I'm about halfway through now, just a little over halfway, I would say. So... Progress is good. This book is a really easy read and I'm really enjoying it. I love all of the spooky elements to it. It's very ghostly. Um, it's, there's a boy in this book called Ben and he can see ghosts and he can see these uh, creatures that no one else can see that are kind of that kind of live in the caves around Whitby and then you've got this woman that's just moved to town and she's very mysterious and another lady has been murdered by a great big dog that's kind of like the size of a cow with fiery red eyes so yeah really enjoying it very very intrigued to see where the story goes hopefully I can finish this tomorrow. <laughs> Hi guys, it's day four. No, it's not. It's, <laughs> it's day five. It's day five of the Spookathon. I'm really not with it. This morning, I had such a bad night. Last night, I couldn't sleep. My cold is not getting any better. My head is just pounding constantly. So I've only been awake for the last hour or so. It's now nearly one o'clock in the afternoon and I haven't read a single page since yesterday. I'm really annoyed about it because I really want to read and do well in this readathon. And then I keep telling myself, you know, you finished one book, so it doesn't matter if you don't finish the others and you still take them part but I don't know I'm a perfectionist guy I'm not really feeling motivated to read anything I just want to mope around in bed um and I really don't want to go to work tonight but I have to so I'll probably listen to my audiobook because I don't really want to pick I don't want to read a physical book today I just my head's not in that place for it I think so if I don't update you guys later I'll try and update you tomorrow I, I just mm. Today is not that day. I've just finished listening to The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. To be honest, I don't really know how I feel about the book and I don't know if that's because of my mood at the moment. Yeah, I don't know. I did feel a little bit bored through some of it, to be honest, and a lot of it was just mindless. Well, it probably isn't mindless waffle, but to me, that's what it felt like. And I just, I couldn't connect to any of the characters and I couldn't connect to the story at all, which is a shame because, like I said, I've seen the film and I really enjoyed it. And the story is super interesting and the film was really creepy. And I thought that's how the book was going to be and it just really wasn't. So I'm a little bit underwhelmed by it but yeah that's the second book I've started for this readathon complete I'm hoping to finish 
the Whitby Witches tomorrow. I don't really have time now. I'm heading to work in half an hour and I've got some stuff that I need to do. And I need to make myself look a bit presentable. Today has just been a really shitty day and I can't wait for it to be over. Anyway, I'm gonna head off and get ready for work and I will talk to you all in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so I've decided that I don't like the picture of Dorian Gray. I don't like the book at all. I had a lot of time to think about it while I was at work last night and it really didn't do anything for me. The writing was just too flowery. The characters just rambled on and on when they didn't need to and I didn't like their personalities either which I guess maybe it's kind of the point but overall I just hated it. It's currently 8 o'clock Saturday morning my boyfriend's just gone to work so I'm on my own for a little bit so I've got the perfect excuse to try and get as much reading done as possible this morning. I'm gonna try not to go back to sleep because I have been sleeping in really bad the last week or so. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to try and finish The Whitby Witches today. I'm not really going to be doing anything other than work this evening and me and my boyfriend are probably going to go out and get some food at some point. But other than that, I'm going to dedicate the whole day to getting this novel finished. Watch this space. <laughs> that is way too much cake. <laughs> I finished another fucking book. I have to keep this video really short, guys, because I have to clock into work in about five minutes and I've not even left my house. But I finished book three of the Spookathon. I've just completed The Whitby Witches about half an hour ago and I absolutely loved it. Oh my gosh, the ending was so crazy. I wish I could talk about it, but I've got to go. So, bye for now, guys. <laughs> so it's Monday. Spookathon is officially over. I didn't get to update yesterday because I was just super busy with family and friends and work. I did start reading a little bit of this. This is my thriller pick for Spookathon. I'm not too far into it, I'm that far into it, I read about 70 pages, but I knew I wasn't going to get it finished, so I just decided not to worry about it. I did pretty well for the Spookathon, actually. I did better than I thought I would. I mean, I was confident going into it because I'd been in a bit of a reading slump and all of the books that I had picked were books that I have been excited to read about for a while. So I finished This Monstrous Thing by Mackenzie Lee, I finished The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde and I also finished The Whitby Witches by Robin Jarvis and I did read a little bit of my thriller. But yeah, I'm super happy that I finished three books. I'm really disappointed with the picture of Dorian Gray. I'm really sad that I didn't like it as much as I thought I was going to, but that's just the nature sometimes. You know, when you you pick up a book that you think is going to be great and then you just get disappointed by it, that happens quite a lot. And I should be used to it, but it's never easy. Um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed reading This Monstrous Thing by Mackenzie Lee. It's definitely my favourite book of the readathon. Without a doubt, I just loved all the creepy elements to it. It had such a really cool, spooky vibe. And I'm definitely going to be recommending it to people if they want a book to read around this time of year. And The Whitby Witches was a very nice surprise, actually. I don't really read a lot of children's books. It was so much more than that. It was very, very layered. There were very complex characters. There was a lot of magic and these storylines all interweave together and I 
have found out that that's a series, it's part of a series, so I'm gonna definitely read the other books. As yeah, I very, very much enjoyed participating in the Spookathon, and I'm very excited to get involved with some more readathons in the future. Thank you guys for watching this vlog. I know it's been a bit of a long one, but I hope you've been entertained and enjoyed following my readathon journey. Let me know in the comments what books you read for the Spookathon, how many books you completed, what your thoughts are on those books that you read. Also let me know if you read any of the books that I read for this Spookathon and what you thought of them and if you've got any recommendations for books I can read for this time of year that I might not have then I'll appreciate that as well and as always please like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you all in another video very soon. I love you guys, thank you. Thank you.